Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ashwant. Uh, uh, I represent Walkin. Uh, so Walkin is a business consulting uh, company uh, that uh, uh, provide uh, business solutions as well as tech solutions for retail businesses. Uh, so, uh, over the last one and a half year, we've been working with uh, Cafe Coffee Day. Uh, I'm sure all of you must be knowing uh, or have been to uh, CCD uh, at any point of time. Uh, um, needless to say, uh, CCD has more than 1,500 stores across India uh, with, uh, you know, all of these stores in at least uh, 200 odd cities in India. Uh, so, uh, when we started working with CCD, uh, they had a... a uh, they, I mean, uh, so Walkin started uh, working with CCD about one and a half year back, and uh, uh, CCD, uh, we were mainly focusing on doing uh, data analytics for them. Uh, so they came back and asked us questions uh, like, uh, you know, who are my customers? And we said, we don't know because, uh, you know, we don't have any data for it. So uh, Walkin sort of uh, looked at this problem and uh, said, uh, you know, how do we solve the problem of collecting data uh, for CCD so that uh, <clears throat> they can better enhance the customer experience? Also, CCD did not have any uh, uh, single channel to communicate with the customers. Uh, uh, the, they, the customers also did not have a channel to communicate with CCD. So we looked at this problem and uh, we sort of uh, uh, went back to the Blackboard and we sort of uh, came out with an experiment. So what we did was uh, we went to one CCD uh, and uh, we said, uh, you know, for all the transactions that take place at the CCD, let the customer give their mobile number. Now, uh, how this helped is uh, uh, for the customer, uh, the incentive is every time he gives the mobile number, he gets a discount. And uh, 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 we have done this experiment over two months and we have found out that a lot of uh, customers uh, who have given us their mobile number, they're actually uh, transacting uh, much higher value than the customers uh, who have not given their mobile number. Also, these customers are more frequently visiting the cafes uh, uh, compared to the customers who have not uh, given their mobile number. So this was clearly a loyalty problem that uh, CCD has, wherein we have established that uh, CCD, uh, you know, we can leverage CCD's uh, customer base to engage uh, loyalty with the customers. Uh, that's how a uh, walk-in platform uh, sort of, uh, um, uh, we envision the walk-in platform, which we built for CCD. Uh, and uh, the platform basically has three elements. One is the payments. Uh, payments are all the transactions uh, uh, that the customer does at a CCD, uh, you know, goes through this uh, platform. Then uh, another is loyalty. We provide a loyalty benefits for uh, almost uh, all the transactions that happen through this platform. Also, we uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, enable personalization. Uh, so when, when I mean personalization, it <clears throat> based on your spend patterns, uh, we sort of tailor the offers that uh, any customer gets. Also, any recommendations that we can provide to the customers. <clears throat> so one of the manifestations of the walk-in platform is the CCD mobile ad app itself. Uh, this is a customer's app, which anyone can just download from Play Store and uh, install it on their mobile. Uh, you know, uh, some of the stats of these apps are, you know, it's, uh, you know, it was launched uh, uh, April 2016 uh, last year. Uh, so uh, downloads are more than 2 million uh, and transactions are around 2 to 5 million. And even uh, we have a healthy place to rating of uh, 4.2. Uh, so the scale at which the app grew was uh, very fast uh, because uh, it's only been uh, like uh, eight months and uh, we have grown almost into a million uh, plus uh, downloads and uh, transactions. So uh, the marketing uh, was, uh, which was done here was uh, mostly, uh, you know, in-store marketing. Uh, 
uh, or uh, word of mouth marketing. There was no uh, other external marketing agency which was uh, doing the marketing. Um, so over, over the talk, um, uh, I want to talk about uh, different learnings uh, that we have had um, building this platform uh, and uh, any challenges that we face. So the first and foremost point that I want to bring about is ease of use. Um, so whenever you're building any app that, uh, which you want to build for scale, you want to uh, establish uh, that this app is very user friendly, otherwise the users are not going to come back. Uh, so here we looked at various options uh, uh, for uh, you know how how does the customer communicate to the barista? So uh, in in CC's case, uh, uh, the one main important uh, uh, places where customer needs to communicate with the barista is at the CCD counter. Here, uh, he might not have internet, so he, we need to rely on other uh, communication methods. We looked at Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, sound, and then QR code. Uh, so Wi-Fi Bluetooth uh, has uh, problems like uh, users have to switch on the hardware uh, and sound was uh, uh, still uh, a much more uh, not, not so proven technology. Uh, and QR code has been, uh, you know, uh, uh, been used uh, a lot uh, by other uh, people. Uh, and uh, we have also found that with QR code, there, uh, you know, uh, there are less chances of error, so we finally resorted to choosing uh, QR code. So how does the problem, uh, uh, how does the user experience actually happens at a store? So basically, uh, you know, I'm a customer, I walk into a CCD, uh, I go to the counter and I tell him, uh, uh, hey, uh, I want a cappuccino and a Tex-Mex uh, sandwich. And the barista asks me, do you want to pay using the app, sir? And I say yes, and I take out my mobile and uh, uh, you know I generate a QR code in my mobile and I show it to the barista. The barista then scans the QR code and uh, voila, payment is done. Uh, uh, immediately after that, you can go back to your uh, place and the barista uh, prepares the order and uh, fetches it at your table. Uh, so here it looks simple, right? So basically you don't need to do anything, you just need to produce a QR code and the payment is done. Um, so uh, here the, some of the important aspects we took when designing the app was, uh, one was uh, user choice. Uh, so as you can see, there are uh, like two uh, options there. One is use beans for uh, beverages, another is pay with wallet. So uh, beans uh, is a loyalty points uh, for CCD, so whenever you're transacting uh, at any cafe, then you uh, you get some loyalty benefits, and those are accumulated as beans. And uh, uh, wallet is just a regular wallet where you can add money. Uh, the reason for providing these options is that we wanted to give the user choice over what options he wants to pick. Uh, also, we wanted to support multi-mode payments, wherein, let's say, if you have balance in these two, and yet you don't have uh, uh, you don't have sufficient balance to pay the bill. You can still use the use cash and uh, uh, finish your payment. Uh, another important thing here was uh, we want to ensure that the app is sticky. So if I if I'm just going to use use cash, then why why will I use bother using the app? So uh, that's where the loyalty uh, uh, benefits actually jump in wherein you still need to use the app because you want to gain loyalty points. Uh, so this was very helpful because a lot of uh, customers came back and told us that, you know, uh, you know, as a customer, I just want to accumulate beans and only after a certain point I want to spend them. Uh, we've also ensured that uh, the payment flows in the app are redundant. Uh, so when I when I say redundant, uh, I mean to say that there are multiple ways in you can end up uh, at a payment flow. So, for example, in the app, uh, as you can see, there's an offer which is Magical Brews uh, offer where where you can just click on the offer, add the offer, and then choose your payment modes and then create a QR code. Or you just want to uh, you know spend by cash but just accumulate beans, you can just directly click, click on Show App at counter. 
or you want to look at your balance first and then uh, decide to pay so you can probably click on the wallet icon and uh, uh, go to uh, payments so uh, through this we have ensured that you know as a customer you have uh, your favorite way to get to payments so uh, we we sort of uh, uh, you know uh, provide the customer uh, both uh, uh, user convenience uh, as well as uh, you know pick uh, ability to pick their own uh, payment modes based on uh, you know um, wh what their uh, circumstances whether they want to earn beans or redeem off or or anything. So on. Um, uh, so I got my user experience locked down. Now, uh, how do I ensure that uh, you know my app is secure? Uh, so because we have a QR code as one of the important uh, channel to communicate uh, to the barista, we want to ensure that uh, you know QR code is as secure as possible. Uh, the first and foremost thing that we did was uh, we disabled the ability to uh, take screenshots on your QR code. So we wanted the QR code only to be generated from the app. And uh, we've also added uh, signing to uh, the QR code because uh, we wanted, we, we didn't want anyone to share the QR code outside the app. Uh, so it'll be very difficult for you to create the QR code, uh, you know, uh, outside the app. Uh, another interesting thing that we did was we added timestamp, which uh, enabled us to debug any payment errors that have happened. Uh, so even in case of fraud, you can uh, readily identify uh, using timestamp uh, if there is a uh, you know QR code that was not generated from the app. You can uh, uh, subtract uh, the transaction time minus uh, QR code creation time, and you can figure figure it out pretty decently. Uh, another uh, thing that we did to the QR code, we uh, added a number to every QR code that is generated uh, per user. Uh, now, what this enabled is uh, whenever you generate a QR code, this uh, number is uh, synced back with our server. So, uh, in a way that we are, uh, you know, invalidating all the QR codes that are generated for this customer. So, at a given point, uh, only one QR code uh, could be generated per customer uh, at any time. <coughs> also, if you're building uh, any um, uh, systems, uh, not only payment, uh, 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 and your uh, factoring scale, you need to uh, factor fraud. Um, so uh, the CCD app uh, for us, uh, the traction grew really fast, and uh, we sort of burned our fingers uh, with uh, a lot of gamers who tried to download the app and uh, uh, use the loyalty points, uh, etc. So here, uh, important thing is, uh, you know, uh, device and user restrictions. So uh, if, if you're building any app, uh, you need to uh, factor in uh, how many users uh, uh, can, uh, in a device, how many users can install an app. Uh, or in, in multiple devices, uh, how many, uh, one user can install the app in how many other devices. So these restrictions need to be put in place if you're building your app. Um, uh, also, because it was a brick and mortar uh, company, uh, we had this problem that uh, a lot of barista, uh, you know, uh, end up using uh, using the QR code for uh, getting beans uh, on behalf of the customer. So you either end up with really good customers uh, all over, or you end up with uh, a lot of baristas. So you need to uh, always uh, keep note of your outliers. Um, so the, these things are, uh, uh, you know, something that we learned on the way, and uh, these things I, I would advise anyone uh, who is building their app to take care. Um, uh, also, uh, in, in a brick and mortar, a lot of things can go on. A uh, lot of things can go wrong uh, on the ground. Although you got your user experience right, you got your security right. Um, you know, many things can still go wrong. Uh, and uh, for us, uh, one of the most important thing was, uh, or uh, one of the things that went wrong was, uh, you know, many a times the pause is offline. So how do you uh, do the payments? Um, 
So uh, we uh, originally, we first uh, tried to minimize, the, uh, mitigate the liability. Uh, so what we did was uh, uh, we uh, gave the we delayed the amount of uh, beans that was uh, given. So it, after a transaction, after a delay, you will get your beans. Uh, that kind of uh, reduce the risk. Also, uh, we looked at other uh, modes. Uh, so one of the mode we looked and also worked on was. Uh, uh, goes as follows, wherein uh, a customer walks into the store, uh, uh, he takes a, uh, he uh, makes his order and then uh, the barista says, sir, the pause is offline. And the barista prints the bill and uh, the bill will be printed with a QR code. So the customer now have to uh, open his app, uh, scan the QR code, do the payment on his mobile because he has internet. And uh, finally once the uh, bill, uh, once he does the payment, he, he again needs to generate a QR code, which uh, will then be sh uh, need to be shown to the barista to validate the payment. Um, now this uh, flow, uh, although it uh, solves a problem, uh, it, uh, it went back wrongly on the user experience because there are uh, two uh, points of failure. One is scanning the QR code and another is uh, showing the QR code. Uh, so we are also working on solving this problem uh, uh, with other ways wherein you can probably order from your app instead of uh, ordering directly at uh, the barista. Um, uh, often neglected, the barista training is very important uh, uh, because uh, in in a FNB uh, or in any retail business, the attrition uh, rate is pretty high, uh, so you can't expect to always held the uh, training sessions uh, because your baristas come and go or your employees come and go. Uh, so here we tried, we first uh, tried to solve this problem by introducing uh, videos uh, into the POS software itself. Uh, so we, <clears throat> we then figured out that that was not possible because the uh, POS hardware did not have enough storage. Uh, so we supplemented the barista training uh, by providing, uh, creating WhatsApp groups and uh, uh, providing videos in them. Uh, we've also, uh, you know, uh, added, created uh, printed material so that the barista can, uh, uh, which is available at every store, so that the barista, if he has any doubts, can look at and uh, figure out. Uh, so when, when making the training material, one thing we kept in mind was uh, you need to be, uh, very, very specific uh, because uh, all these baristas are not so tech savvy as most of us. Uh, so you need to drill down the point uh, to the minute details. Um, and uh, another uh, thing that we did was uh, business process re-engineering. Uh, so, um, so in a case like uh, CCD, uh, uh, it's very important to uh, provide accountability at all levels. So what we did was uh, we tried to change the process, business processes, to accommodate the use uh, use of app also. So what we did uh, was, you know, whenever any customer complains in the app or gives a one-star rating, uh, you know, a mail will be sent to the area manager uh, of that cafe and then uh, area manager will uh, now need to, uh, be accountable for the customer. So he either needs to resolve the issue and then contact the customer again, or um, you know he resolve the issue and uh, we can get back to the customer. So here uh, we have ensured uh, uh, that you know all, at all levels uh, uh, the uh, employees are aware as to what is happening and why are we getting bad ratings if there are any. Also. Um, uh, I, I mentioned that um, much of the uh, marketing for this was word of mouth. So, uh, in order to bring bring that, we also had to uh, incentivize uh, baristas to market the app uh, uh, effectively. So, uh, we we had a, we gave uh, any incentive to barista who markets the app uh, and transacts using the app, so that even the barista feels that. This app is not a new thing, but it's part of uh, you know my work. Um, another thing uh, which you should keep in mind. 
<coughs> so um, I, I guess uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, what I had in mind. Um, so uh, overall, we have had a great uh, success story, and uh, we've been uh, uh, effective in uh, uh, building the app and also uh, creating a good user base. Uh, uh, probably over the next year, we'll, uh, we are looking at uh, how to engage the users uh, now that they are onboarded uh, in the app. Uh, uh, with that, um, I'll uh, leave uh, you know, the audience to questions. So if you have any questions, just fire away. Thank you, Ashwant. Um, can we take some questions quickly? Um, so, yeah, sure. Hi, Ashwin, this is Vikas. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Um, first of all, great talk using the CCD example. Thank you. Um, my first part of question is on your data analysis. Um, uh, and second is on the process of the payment. OK. So first, uh, so data analysis is, um, you mentioned that uh, people who gave the mobile numbers voluntarily were more frequent than people who didn't. How do you know that for sure? Uh, so uh, we we sort of guessed that number because we uh, knew from uh, the people in the cafe as to how uh, how many users frequent and uh, uh, what when they are coming. So it, it was sort of a guess because we didn't have any real data uh, validating that, and it was also uh, very local to one particular cafe where we ran this experiment. Okay, so mostly visual analysis. Yeah, mostly visual analysis. But uh, over uh, after this app, we sort of know it for certain. Yes, uh, uh, people uh, who are coming again, uh, I mean, who are using the app are coming again and again. So, so this thanks. So, second process of your payment, right? I want to understand it more clearly. Uh, so, the bill is gen you place your order at the counter. The bill is generated, and you know the total. So uh, the barista guy tells you the, the amount, and you create a QR code on the app. And, uh, and the person then scans the QR code. So how is the payment made through the wallet, or the, per or the customer still scans, uh, swipes the card? So is this the pause offline scenario, or is the first? Uh... First online okay. scenario. Uh, can you repeat the question? The question is on how the, how the actual payment happened. So the, the customer placed the order, the barista guy uh, responded with the total, and the person goes to the app, chooses to pay through the app. They uh, create a QR code using the QR code process yeah. in the app, and uh, the the barista guy then scans the QR code. So where is the pro payment happening? Is so it the from the wallet in the app, or is it through the swiping the credit card after the scanning the QR code? So it happens at uh, multiple places. Like I said, we have three pay modes. One is the loyalty points. So loyalty points in wallet uh, is deducted directly from the customer's account. And uh, the cash or credit card, uh, the uh, barista actually validates that payment. OK. OK. Uh, I think there's a question here. Uh, very quickly, uh, while the mic has moved back, I'll just make a quick announcement. Uh, so Malvika and Shrikant are holding an impromptu uh, BOF downstairs uh, about policy. So it'll starting, uh, it's during the course of the lunch break. So when we break for lunch, you can, while possibly having lunch or otherwise, uh, join this uh, BOF, which is happening downstairs, being conducted by Malvika and Shrikant on the policy leading to payments. OK. So can you just pass on to Florian, I think? Yeah. Um, do you have any data on uh, what is more reliable, the customer scanning the QR code or the customer showing a QR code and the POS terminal scanning it? Um, so um, uh, at least uh, the the reason why we picked the customer showing the QR code is customer needn't do any effort. Uh, so I don't have actual data as to uh, you know what are the success stories uh, in this, but uh, user experiences uh, user experience played a key factor in making that decision. <clears throat> Hi, uh, Sandeep here. Uh, here. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Was this uh, pause solution built, uh, you know, tailor-made for CCD pauses, or uh, is this solution, does this solution work across uh, different pause terminals as well? The scanning uh, of the QR code and, you know, the integration. Uh, so, uh, 
POS solution was the POS end of this uh, platform is only built for CCD, custom built for CCD. It does not uh, apply for other players, but that Any can plans be of, uh, you know, porting it to other POS uh, vendors as well? Uh, not really. It depends on the customers that we actually get. Uh, if there is a customer who is looking out uh, for something like this, then yes. Thanks. Hi, uh, I had a question on one of the uh, selling points that you showed that was loyalty there. Um, so was there any analysis done on, basically loyalty is a um, thing but we need to have the right numbers to uh, say whether it worked or not for a company. So you, people accumulate the beans and then finally what was the outcome, how many beans does a person get and um, there should be a record of the customer lifetime value and did it increase because of that or it didn't? So, you know, getting free beans is always good, but did it actually help in, you know, overall profit for the company or not? Uh, so, um, uh, like I said, I don't have any data going before this as per loyalty. Uh, those are just uh, guest numbers. But uh, uh, for one thing, uh, we are certain is the, uh, there are a lot of customers who are visiting the cafes because uh, we are providing loyalty program and there are a lot of people who are uh, e even transacting for the very first time because uh, there is a sign up bonus uh, for that. Just one quick clarification. What was CCD's objective with trying this? What are they hoping to get out of this particular exercise? Uh, they are hoping to increase this business. I mean, that's it. But in any, any particular way that they had articulated it to you guys or? Uh, 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 not, not really. They, they only objective was to increase their business, and this was our uh, solution okay, so for that. This is the solution you proposed. Uh, yes, okay. that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry. Hi. Oh, one second. There's one. There's one question at the back, and then I'll come to you. Uh, hi. This is Gangadhar. I have a question about the uh, securing the QR code. So you mentioned that you had the option of paying uh, via QR code. QR code. Yeah. Um, what I'm trying to find out is, uh, you know, from all the fraud that you saw, you, because you mentioned that you did. Uh, you know, there were some issues that you faced. So what, what was like the most advanced uh, instance of fraud you saw and, and also what was the most common fraud that you saw, just to give a perspective of the kind of uh, users who are doing this? So uh, I think a lot of, uh, lo lot of people uh, try to uh, root their phones and change their device IDs and uh, then sign up using the app. So that was one uh, fraud that we saw. Um, uh, I, I think, uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, the the uh, they, they there was uh, one or two uh, scenarios of barista fraud wherein uh, barista was scanning on behalf of the customer. So that was uh, also another one. Okay, there's a question here from. Just yeah. Yeah. So in extension of that question, okay. QR code. Somebody can snap the photo with another phone. Right, so you put a technical effort into securing that QR code, it's not worth it, right? Uh, another thing is uh, about, uh, I mean, the barista level fraud, I, I don't see any technical way to even solve it, like uh, why even try to solve it? Uh, so uh, the way to solve it is uh, by looking at outliers. Uh, so we basically uh, look at the data of transactions uh, and uh, see whether you know, analyze whether they are actually baristas or customers. And on the first question, uh, can you repeat that? Uh, I'm sorry, I was saying that QR code, somebody can snap it with another phone. So because uh, the barista is scanning the QR code, he can make a visual uh, decision as to whether the QR code is from the app or not. Even if you have a good uh, camera and you took it perfectly, it's only for that one instance. Also, another thing, um, there is a friend of mine, Omer, you can see his app on uh, the Play Store. It can take screenshots in apps which have disabled QR codes. So that's not a very secure way to do. Uh, also, another thing you talked about, uh, this thing, uh, device ID getting changed. So you don't even need to root it. You wipe your data, device ID gets changed. So uh, why are you using device ID as a way to identify users? Uh, not a way to identify user, that, that is one of the parameter in which we identify the user. So there are other IDs uh, along with device ID. Any other questions? Anybody else who had, yeah, there's one, one more at the back. Yeah. 
Yeah, just a follow up. So you mentioned device ID changing being the most common. I was curious about the other side, you know, where you looked at the fraud and said, wow, this guy must be like a technical genius to have made this kind of a fraud. So I'm just curious about what was the most advanced one that you saw? Um, I, I don't have an exact answer for that because uh, I wasn't uh, very involved in looking all the fraud. Um, uh, device ID was uh, pretty common. Then we also found uh, uh, not a fraud, but most mostly gamers. Uh, so trying to, uh, there are a lot of uh, websites which were put up uh, where, uh, you know, you know, use my code and then you will get a referral bonus because uh, they are trying to game the, uh, because of their website. So that, that was very interesting for us. Um, that also, sh uh, I guess everyone should watch out for. Anybody else? Okay. So if you have no further questions, uh, please give them a round of applause.